In the movies, mad scientists and evil geniuses with big plans are always the coolest villains. The creative recluse with a chip on their shoulder deploying some big weapon in space before being stopped by a superhero or a secret agent always sells tickets. While there have been plenty of mad scientists in history, their evil plans haven't made it out of our atmosphere. But even as we enter the era of privately owned space stations, there won't be much room for bathrooms, let alone secret experiments or planet-destroying lasers. The only mad thing in space will probably be the money. So, how are scientists going to kick off the future economy of space research? Let's find out. Welcome to Space Greed. The unique properties of space make it ideal for some world-changing and unique scientific experiments, which is exactly why so much money, time, and brain power have been dedicated to establishing space stations and other research platforms in space. Low Earth orbit is generally considered to be Earth-centered orbits with an altitude of 1,200 miles or less. This is the area where the International Space Station currently orbits and where many proposed future platforms will be located. Since the end of the Apollo program, Apollo 17 in 1972, no human has gone beyond low Earth orbit. The concept of a space station, a satellite supporting a human crew in Earth orbit, has existed in science fiction since the mid-19th century. The first station was Salyut, launched by the Soviet Union in 1971. Skylab, launched by the US, was an early counterpart. Mir was the first modular space station. A core unit was launched first, with modules developed and launched later to be attached to it. The current core space station in operation is the International Space Station. The International Space Station is also a modular, habitable satellite in low Earth orbit. It's a collaborative project between the US, Canada, Russia, Japan, and the European Space Agency. It's the most expensive single object ever built at a cost of over $150 billion. The only other ongoing space station project is the Chinese Tiangong Space Station. The first module was launched in 2021. The remaining modules are expected to be launched by the end of 2022. It's about one-fifth the mass of the International Space Station and will support a crew of six. Apart from the International Space Station partner countries, only China, Russia, and the US have operated orbital platforms to call home. Although India has plans to build and launch its own space station sometime in the 2030s too. What makes the International Space Station, or any space station for that matter, a unique environment for doing science? Perhaps the most important is microgravity. Like other objects in Earth orbit, the International Space Station is in what scientists call freefall. Inside it, you would experience weightlessness rather similar to being in an elevator hurtling toward the ground because all of its cables had been cut off. The International Space Station is launched with just the right speed, so that as it falls toward Earth, it goes around by just the right amount to stay in orbit, going around the Earth 15 times each day. Since the Earth's atmosphere keeps us shielded, a low Earth orbit space platform is the prime location to capture and study cosmic radiation and its effects on various types of life. Another benefit of space as a scientific platform would be the vantage point it provides. A space station or research platform in space would obviously have the best seats in the house for observing the Earth from above. The International Space Station is a testament to human scientific achievement. Every project, mission, or experiment carried out up there has the potential to advance various aspects of human development. Efforts on the International Space Station continue to spark innovations in technology, advances in human health, and create opportunities to observe Earth, study natural disasters, and push forward scientific research across the board. 
Astronauts have conducted about 3,000 experiments on the International Space Station. There are three fundamental kinds of experiments carried out on space stations. The first are experiments studying human health and survivability in space. Back in the day, scientists didn't know how humans would react to spaceflight and whether we would survive at all. Which is why Laika the dog became the first animal to orbit the Earth on Sputnik 2. Since then, many more animals as well as humans have been to space, but there are also experiments helping us understand the effects of long-term, if not permanent, habitation in space. Scientists have discovered that the environment in space affects muscle atrophy, bone loss, gene expression, and cardiovascular health negatively. It is essential to find ways of mitigating these effects for the health of humans in space and on Earth alike. There are no doctors or hospitals on board the International Space Station, and doctor house calls aren't really feasible in low Earth orbit. The Advanced Diagnostic Ultrasound and Microgravity Study involved crew members running ultrasound scans on each other under remote supervision to diagnose medical problems. This could potentially have applications in areas on Earth where medical personnel and facilities are in short supply. The second are experiments on applying technologies developed for the space station and other projects here on Earth. Water filtration systems developed for the International Space Station are being used to provide clean water to households in Sub-Saharan Africa and Iraq. Air purification and filtration systems that ensured astronauts had clear air while in orbit have led to the development of aeroside systems that can be bought off the shelf for around $600. Robotics used to maintain and operate the International Space Station are being used to develop cutting-edge robotic surgery techniques. The third are experiments that take advantage of the unique environment and properties of space to learn more about fundamental science and develop Earth technologies. A prime example is NASA's Cold Atom Lab on the International Space Station. The Cold Atom Lab is a facility that studies ultra-cold quantum gases in a microgravity environment. The Cold Atom Lab also produced the so-called fifth state of matter, a Bose-Einstein condensate in Earth orbit. Studying it can help us improve our understanding of quantum physics and potentially develop quantum technologies. The scientists are also studying the behavior of fluids in microgravity to better understand their properties and phenomena like superconductivity. Fluids that do not mix well on Earth can be mixed together almost completely due to the absence of gravity. Space and research platforms like the International Space Station represent a vast opportunity for scientific progress and achievement. NASA plans to keep the International Space Station running until 2030, but Russia plans to leave the space station and start a new station, Russian Orbital Service Station, to replace it. It is unclear at this time if extending the International Space Station to 2030 would be viable without Russian involvement. But even if the logistical and geopolitical problems are resolved, the International Space Station is still reaching the end of its lifespan. NASA's plans for putting it out to pasture is to use a modified Russian Progress spacecraft to direct the space station into a fiery re-entry through the atmosphere above an uninhabited area, most likely the middle of the Pacific Ocean. After the International Space Station, NASA plans to transition to privately owned and operated space stations carrying out research and commercial activity. It seeks to maintain an uninterrupted U.S. presence in low Earth orbit. Towards this objective, NASA has signed agreements with three private companies and has provided funding of more than $400 million. Orbital Reef, designed by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Sierra Space, it is intended to be a mixed-use business park, combining space tourism and other commercial activities. It is supposed to be operational in the second half of the 2020s. Starlab Space Station is being designed by NanoRax as an inflatable space habitat capable of supporting four crew members. It also sports a large robotic arm, which is always cool. Northrop Grumman is also building a free-flying space station to support commercial space activities. In addition, Axiom Space will design and build components that will initially be part of the International Space Station, but will later detach and form its own Axiom Station. Space is a growing industry, and low Earth orbit is full of opportunity. Establishing a robust low Earth orbit economy, in which many groups on Earth can participate, 
benefits American industry, promotes technological discovery, and increases benefits for humanity that are discovered or advanced through in-space work and research. Once a thriving economy in low Earth orbit has been established, NASA can purchase services as one of many customers. This should enable the agency to focus its resources on landing the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. NASA alone spends between $3 billion and $4 billion per year on the International Space Station. Once transitioning to the use of private space stations, NASA and the U.S. government expect to save up about a billion dollars per year. It's an exciting and scary time as we reach the end of the era of the International Space Station. The unique properties of space have already proven to be important aspects of cutting-edge scientific research. If things continue on their current trajectory, low Earth orbit will become a thriving economic hub fueled by space-based laboratories and research facilities. Space really is the final frontier, and we only have to go as far as low Earth orbit to see where the future is headed. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel right now and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any great content. And look out for Curiosity Stream on social media. Links in the description.